Hello there everyone and welcome to Tune Talk with Andy. Now, the last week and a half, I decided to do something quite difficult and quite... I would say exhausting, but it has actually been quite an adventure and it's... Basically just exploring new albums and new bands since, well... In the past I've usually just put on the usual stuff and just kind of settled with that, but... In recent times I've actually learned to explore a bit more and I've actually been able to rank every single album that I've listened to, with every damn song on it. I've put it all in a freaking document on my computer and yeah, it's on a scale of 1 to 10. Now a 10 out of 10 song is a song that is... that basically covers five factors. First of all, instrumentals. The instrumentals have to be good. Two, the vocals. And three, the lyrics. Now these two are kind of intertwined but I do find them to be... I find it to be appropriate to separate them a bit, because... you can have amazing lyrics with an awful vocalist, so you kind of have to find the right balance in order for me to rank that as good, or at least competent. Uh, the fourth is the listener's interpretation of the art itself. Like, if it's just dull and it has no meaning behind it, it's gonna go down low on the ranking, I'm not gonna lie. And lastly, number five, the entirety of it. If everything is in place, and everything feels right, and it's connected and intertwined just right, it's a 10. It, it's a 10. It basically has to, you know, pass the listening test. Like, if it sounds good, sounds great, and all the categories are, you know, phenomenal, it's a 10. Whereas if it's a 1, it's... Uh, <laughs> it actually can't even be considered music if it's one. The only, like... <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but I do have one album that actually suits one really damn well. Um, but we'll get into that at another time. But today, we're actually discussing one of my personal favorite albums in recent times. It's Octopus by Gentle Giant. You might see it on my green screen behind there. And I just got to say, Jesus Christ above. That album is fantastic, and it's, it really has stood the test of time. It's phenomenal. Now, before we get into the whole thing, the whole album that is, let's just talk a bit about the album and Gentle Giants. Just a few, you know, facts, a few bits and bobs. First of all, it was published in 1972 on... I, I actually have two sources that have given me different information as to the month and date itself. Spotify says January 1st, but other sources say December 1st. So, I don't really want to pick either of them because, well, I wasn't alive at the time and I don't own the physical copy itself so I can't just check. Um, but yeah, it was at least in 1972. All sources agree on that. So yeah, it's Gentle Giant's fourth album. You may have heard other albums like Acquiring the Taste, which is another one we'll get into at another time. Uh, the genre is prog rock, also known as progressive rock. Uh, it's, I've got to say, progressive rock and progressive metal. They are, hands down, my personal favourite genre of all time. It's just so advanced, it's so insanely technical, and I love it. And a bit of a fun fact, the album Octopus was allegedly named Octopus by Phil Schulman's wife, as a pun on Octopus, which means eight musical works, which then reflect on the eight songs on the album, which I find to actually be really, really cool. It's a really nice detail. Uh, the tracks themselves were writ mostly written by Kerry Minier and Ray Shulman. The lyrics, however, were jointly written by Derek Shulman and Phil Shulman. Now, you may notice that <laughs> there's a lot of Shulmans. They're brothers, so that's, that's also a fun fact. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the songs themselves. Now, the first song on the album is called The Advent of Panurge, and <laughs> in my personal opinion, it's the best song on the album. It's, it's so good, I highly advise you guys to listen to it. If you don't want to listen to the entire album, at least listen to The Advent of Panurge. It's so good. Um, but yeah, the use of instrumentals on that song, the way it just builds up the vocals in a way that tells a story so beautifully, I love that. And the song length, uh, some might say it's a bit short for prog, but I think it's... I think it's just the right song length for that type of song, the message, and the story itself. It's phenomenal. The lyrics are kind of simple which is why it's not a 10 out of 10, but I feel like it still serves its purpose quite well. So there's, it's not really much of a minus, it's just, it 
would have been a 10 if the lyrics were a bit more advanced, but I think the song is fine as it is, no need to tweak it at all. The second song on the album is called, Jesus Christ, they have some weird names, Raconteur Troubadour, <laughs> or some shit like that. Um, but yeah, I really love the unique and fascinating vocal style in that that song. It's it's actually so, it's so to me, it's just revolutionary. It's it's really phenomenal. As always, great use of instrumentals, especially on this on this song. Uh, the lyrics themselves are simple and but decent here as well. There's not much else to say about that. Uh, they could improve by switching up the pace a bit in the song a bit more. Uh, I ranked this at 8.5 out of 10, whereas the advent of Panurge is a 9.5 out of 10. The third song on the album, A Cry For Everyone, 8.5 out of 10 as well. Yeah, consistent bangers, who would have thought? Uh, but yeah, to me, the lyrics, they're relatable, they're solid, they, they do the job perfectly. It's as it's supposed to be, in my opinion. Uh, the, song, the song structure is great, both lyrically and instrumentally speaking, it's solid all around. But it could be a tad bit longer, I think. I feel like this is the type of song that needs a bit more length to expand on the message itself. I mean, you can kind of hear it in the song's title itself, A Cry For Everyone. I feel like it deserves to be a bit longer, but other than that, it's a phenomenal song. No complaints. Now the fourth song on the album, called Knots. I've actually placed this as the lowest, I think, at 7.5 out of 10, which is by no means a bad rating at all. It's a solid song. Solid. Um, it's one of those songs that you'll, you'll really appreciate it when you're listening to the album in its entirety, but you wouldn't necessarily put it on by itself. Um, but yeah, the vocal style on that song is fascinating. I really like it. Uh, the slow but progressive ending as well. I, there's something they did there that I really appreciate, so I'd, I'd recommend checking that out. If <coughs> <coughs> oh god. Um, but yeah, the thing that drags the song down a bit, a bit much in my opinion, is the opening half minute is quite iffy. It's a bit weird. Feels like maybe some production was a bit off. I, I don't know. I'm not good with the technical aspects of music. I'm just I'm just using my ears. Like what I like, what I don't like. That's what I base things off of. Um, but yeah, other than the iffy opening, it does get redeemed quite quickly. So it's still a solid song. The fifth song on the album is called "The Boys in the Band," and this song is actually quite good. It's an 8 out of 10 in my opinion. Uh, it has a really cool opening, you have to check that out. It's unique and creative, it has in amazing instrumentals. Uh, the song also gets you imagining all sorts of things. So, without me spoiling exactly what I mean by that, you should definitely check it out. Either on Spotify, YouTube, or whatever it is. I've, I... It's called Apple Music, that's also another thing. Uh, but yeah, regardless, uh, there is a distinct lack of lyrics, which <laughs> which sadly is a huge factor to me, so I can't rank it higher than 8. Sorry, that's just that's just how it is. Uh, the only exceptions for those type of songs where there's a lack of lyrics would be like bands like Animals as Leaders or Liquid Tension Experiments, where it's all instrumentals. In which case, I know what to expect, whereas on an album like this, where all of the songs have lyrics and vocals, I kind of can't just have a random song be mostly instrumentals, if you know what I mean. So, it, it just throws me off a bit on this album, but the song is still great, it's still an 8 out of 10. Now the sixth song on the album is actually the second best one in my opinion. It's called Dog's Life, and it's, it's iconic, man. The opening is both iconic and brilliant, you have to check it out. It's... I feel like most people who has a dad who listens to prog or rock, they definitely will have heard this opening at some point in their life, because it's iconic. And the lyrics are solid, no complaints, not amazing, not awful, and the vocal runs, they were a beautiful choice. Adding those special vocal runs along the tune, it's so fantastic. It's great storytelling and funky instrumentals, which is also really fun on these, especially the older, like, prog rock albums. Uh, the, it's just funk intertwined into rock, and I really appreciate that. It's so, it's so nice. Oh yeah, one thing that I wish about this song is that it could be a bit longer because it's such a fun experience. Um, it, it's a short song, but it's, it's, it's short and sweet, which adds a bit of extra character in my opinion, but yeah, I do wish it was a bit longer, so. Now the seventh song on the album is Think of Me With Kindness, which is also a 9 out of 10 in my opinion. But if I had to pick between Dog's Life and Think of Me With Kindness, I would probably say Dog's Life is a smidge better, but I 
couldn't justify placing it at the same spot as the advent of a Panurge because that song is just, oh, it's nearly a 10. But yeah, nine, both nine out of 10, phenomenal ratings, don't get me wrong. Uh, the vocals are great, it has nice lyrics, not amazing, not bad, but nice. They're sweet. Um, when it comes to the instrumentals, they're like, there's something smooth about it. Everything just flows nicely, and I really appreciate that with the song. And uh, yeah, overall, the entire production of it and the entire, like, I'd say performance, it's creative and downright brilliant. I, it's, it's amazing, and there's a reason that the lowest ranking song on this album is a 7.5. <laughs> with the rest being over 8 out of 10, which is extremely rare on most albums I've listened to. So, yeah. But yeah, back to the last song on the album, which is called River. I've placed that at an 8 out of 10. Uh, the opening riff is really nice. It's great, in fact. Uh, the instrumentals themselves across the entire tune, they're funky and really intriguing, I'd say. I'd say probably the most intriguing of the entire album. There's just something about it that gets your ears like, you start questioning, is this, is this good or is this amazing? Like you can't say it's bad, <laughs> you just can't. But I feel like over time, it builds on itself and it gets you to appreciate that song even more, especially the instrumentals. I think River is more of a grower than a shower, if you know what I mean. So if you listen to it, Across maybe a month, like here and there, I feel like it'll go from like an 8 to a 9. But for the time being, across two listens of the album, I placed it at 8 out of 10 because I think that's appropriate, at least for the time being. But of course, over time, ratings do change because some songs could get overplayed and you start to appreciate them less. Whereas others, if you haven't heard them for ages and you suddenly rediscover it, it'll instantly just fly up the rankings. But I've tried to be as objective as possible with just a smidge of subjectivity in it to just make it at least somewhat fair in my opinion. But yeah, the vocals and lyrics themselves on this song are a bit boring and the lyrics are too, which kind of drags it a bit. But it's again, it's still an enjoyable listen. It's still really fun. Um, but yeah, to sum it up, uh, there are a few things I think, I think the album could have done a bit better. Uh, the lyrics could have been a bit stronger in certain cases, and yeah, some songs just could have been a bit longer to properly convey the message that it's going for, you know? Now, the way I rank each album as, like, in its entirety, is gonna be that I add all of the individual ratings together, and I divide them by the number of songs, and I either round it up or down to an even number based on how much I liked it. Now, after having done the math, um, it landed on 8.5, exactly, but I personally think it should be brought up to 9, because I thoroughly enjoy listening to the album in its entirety. So, the album itself, a 9 out of 10, easily. It's a phenomenal album, go check it out. That's it for now, thank you guys, I'll be back soon.